Welcome to an extremely cool video in which we are going to be finally debunking and ending one of the biggest debates happening in the guitar sector of the internet. And there are three cool things about this video. The first cool thing being that we are going to approach this topic through knowledge and reason instead of mindless gear comparisons. The second cool thing about this video is that it's not sponsored. Therefore, I can say whatever the fuck comes to my mind. The third cool thing about this video is that the guy in front of the camera is sitting on a ball. A yoga ball. So grab a cup of coffee and spend the next few minutes with me talking about profilers versus modelers. So for the purposes of this video I will call upon the powers of my university degree in computer graphics. Even though I was not really interested in graphics I was mostly doing audio DSP and I will share that knowledge with you today. One very important thing to say is that I will be compressing and simplifying, overly simplifying this information so it's fun and easy to understand for everybody. If you think that I missed something or if you think you can explain it better than me, make sure to do it in the comments down below. Okay, so before we get into modelers versus profilers, we need to talk very quickly about how audio is processed. So in digital audio you input some sound, then it sort of gets chopped into like samples or like numbers and then you do some mathematical transformations to it and then you get your output sound. There are different mathematical transformations, there are different ways how we can process the sound depending on the result you want to get and I want to talk about two main groups. That would be linear processing and non-linear processing. So linear processing is like equalizers and simple delays and non-linear processing is like distortions, compression and stuff, tube amplifier sounds. So audio DSP has been around for decades now and there have been many different approaches to getting non-linear transfer functions. Some of them being more realistic than others, but a huge problem was the real-time computation. Because if you want to make them super cool and super realistic, then it's impossible to compute them in real time, therefore we as guitar players can't really play and hear the result immediately. Which kind of sucks when you play guitar. So to get them to work in real time, what they started doing, they, they had to eliminate some parts and do like approximations. sometimes really good approximations that kind of sound like the real thing but are so much easier and faster to compute. So all this research has been done on academic institutions by professors, assistant professors, students and most of these companies just select one of these approaches because most of these approaches are actually available online you can find them and they would implement that and create the product. Now I'm not saying that these companies don't have smart people who contribute and bring something to the table. What I'm saying is that no Normally this type of mathematical research is first done on academic institutions and different companies implement different algorithms therefore their products sound a little bit different. So as I said there have been many different ways to how you can get to this non-linear transfer function or the sound of distortion and different companies have been using different ways but in the last 10 years there has been a huge boom in this industry. And that boom was the introduction of neural networks into this whole thing. So what researchers figured out that instead of modeling capacitors, diodes, transistors and all this kind of stuff which is very tedious programming, god if you only knew, they can use machine learning algorithms to basically compare processed sound to unprocessed sound. So basically what you need to do is input two sounds like one set of samples which is your unprocessed sound and a set of samples which is your processed process sound like one reamp through your amplifier for example. And then the neural network is sort of going to compare this and create this transfer function that people have been doing a lot of coding to create. It's just a much easier way. And the general idea is the more samples, the more information you give to this algorithm, the less of a mistake this neural network is going to make so the transfer function would be more accurate. By the way, if you find this information useful, please make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to the channel and visit the Slightly Technical Academy because over there I'm creating a community of people who are willing to learn this stuff. Registration is for free and you can also find some free tone examples. Getting back to the topic. So basically what I was saying so far is that 
if you want to make your guitar sound like it's running through a fully cranked Marshall in digital audio, doesn't matter if it's a plugin or some piece of hardware, what you need is a set of mathematical transformations. And there are different ways how you can get to that set of mathematical transformations with varying degrees of precision. So this brings us to the topic of modelers versus profilers. So as far as I understood, the modelers are considered to be the more old school style of coding and the profilers are the ones that use the neural networks to do those captures. Let's check out Neural DSP for example. So Neural DSP offers us those archetype plugins and it also offers us Quad Cortex as a piece of hardware which is pretty much running the same models or captures or whatever. Now I have to say that I don't have any insider information, I'm just doing uh, observation here. So I'm pretty sure that Neural DSP is using neural networks to create both their captures and their models. That pretty much makes the models just like badass captures. So I'm pretty sure that for the plugins they just use huge banks of samples, they supply them to the neural networks and they do a lot of training making the captures very very precise. Then they blend this with some old school modeling or old school programming of certain aspects of the plugin and they make it not only sound but also respond to all the knob turning and switches and everything pretty much like you would expect the real amplifier to respond. Now the quad Cortex also offers those captures, but those are like very quick captures because you're sort of going to capture only one snapshot of the amplifier. So it's not an image of the amplifier, it is the neural network getting some information and creating mathematical transformations. And with that information you can play that particular sound that you set on the amplifier, but the moment you start turning the knobs it will sort of drift away from the original idea. So as you know the capturing process creates some weird sounds and what they're basically doing is they have a set of sounds at various degrees of volume and they run it through the amplifier practically reamping it and then use the processed samples and create this mathematical transfer function and I'm saying this because people say that modelers are more dynamic. I mean I get it if you want to compare a Kemper to a Quad Cortex and, and a Fractal XFX, these are different pieces of hardware and for sure maybe one of them may be more or less dynamic, but that's not because one is an image of an amplifier and the other one is a model of an amplifier. That doesn't make sense. So moving on to Kemper amplifiers, so this is what we call a profiler. The Kemper was the first one in profiling and it actually came a long way. Today the Kemper profiles are actually much more precise and much more sophisticated than the old ones were and we're coming back to the fact that pretty much this device is also creating mathematical transfer functions through means of capturing. It just does the captures much better than before, so you either like it or you don't. If we move on to the Tonex, so the Tonex is cheaper than those devices and for sure maybe some people would think that there are some differences in hardware in the quality of the processors. That's absolutely fine and that's absolutely debatable but what the Tonex does, it's creating tone models. Are those models or are those profiles? They call them tone models but they're also captures through a neural network creating those transfer functions and that's what you get. In a Tonex you get a stock equalizer so it's basically it's not reacting like the real amplifier. Check out this video if you want to learn a trick how you can make your Tonex react similarly to a real amp. So the Line 6 Helix and the Fractal Audio um, stuff, they're pretty much like the old school modelers. I don't have any information if they're using neural networks for their stuff, but why wouldn't they be? Since all these companies are basically, why wouldn't they be using everything that's available? Why wouldn't they be using a blend of all this stuff? Because for some things it's simply easier to use neural networks. It's faster, it yields great results, but since these companies were working on their models and their algorithms since a long time, I understand why they would stick to this kind of style. But then again, it's either you like a Helix or you like a Fractal or you like a Quad Cortex. It's not about 
profiler versus modeler. The last thing I want to mention is something that a lot of people don't know and it's the Neural Amp modeler. There is an open source modeler that all of us can use and practically share our amplifier models for free. And a lot of companies are using the Neural Amp modeler as their engine for creating captures.